And uh, may I now request you to kindly make your deliberations, sir. Over to Dr. Joshi. Thank you, Dr. Manjula. I know that we are running on Indian stretchable time and we have actually compressed it. I'll see whether I can save some time. But uh, today, what I'm going to discuss is the molecule. And we are in an ARB era, as they call it, the angiotensin receptor blocker era. And tell me certain, which is a metabolic certain, and because of which many of us as endocrinologists are very fond of this molecule, probably differentiates it from the rest. So my presentation, and if anybody wants this presentation, just mail me on sashank.sr at gmail.com, is updated on 31st August, October 2020. So let us look at this molecule very closely and let us look at the overview. I will give you a little bit on pharmacodynamics, a little bit on role of telmisartan on endothelial function, renal function, on LVH and atrial fibrillation, on cardiovascular protection. And then we can compare the effects of telmisartan head to head with other sartans. And then we really need to look at its hard data, evidence based data on telmisartan, losartan, candy sartan, valsartan. And then maybe Head to head, how does it perform? Maybe a couple of take home points. Because really, it is in the ARB space today. Tell me, Saturn is right up there in the pecking order, at least in the Indian or the Southeast Asian space. We are going to hear a very elegant talk by Professor Anthony, and I'm certain that he's a little delayed. But the National Guidelines for Management of Hypertension recommends ARBs as an initial or as an add on to antihypertensive therapy. However, when you look at the chemical structure of the molecule, there are a lot of differences in the molecular structures of ARB because there is a lot of variations in the lipid solubility, the volume distribution, the bioavailability, the biotransformation, the plasma half-life, the receptor affinity, the residence time on the receptor and elimination. And therefore, different properties might have variations which are apparent in physiological as well as pharmacodynamic effects of ARBs. Tell me certain from that standpoint has a very unique signature. It is a unique molecular signature. It's a unique ARB. It is a high affinity for the angiotensin type 1 receptor. In fact, there's very outgoing cutting edge work on telmisartan as a preventive agent in actually COVID. As I talk today, you know that I'm a member of the Maharashtra State Task Force for COVID. And we are actually conducting a trial on telmisartan in the COVID population in hypertension. So it has some role. It also has a role in the diabetic space, but I'm not going to allude to that today. So it has a long duration of receptor binding. So it binds to the receptor for a longer duration compared to the other ARBs. It is a very high lipophilicity. It's a long plasma half-life and therefore a high affinity, long acting agent, which we have now. So clearly, if you look at the pharmacodynamics, the angiotensin 2 type 1 receptor binding activity of telmisartan has a KI of 3.7 plus or minus 0.7 or 81 receptor. However, it has no or little affinity for AT2 receptor or for any of the neurohormonal receptor systems like acetylcholine, catecholamine, dopamine, histamine, serotonin, imipramine receptor. So no other receptors. It's very, very highly selective over there and does not block the action of the other receptor systems that are involved with cardiovascular function. So from that standpoint, the molecule telmisartan, as I said, is a signature molecule. Clearly, from the pharmacokinetic standpoints, telmisartan is the most lipophilic of all the ARBs with a partition coefficient of a log of 3.2. And this physicochemical property of the partition coefficient of 3.2 results the high volume of distribution which is almost 500 liters or 7 liters per kilogram of the body weight. Compared to that, if you look at candisartan, valsartan, iprostartan and the active metabolite of losartan, they have a very, very small volume of distribution of 0.13 to 0.24 liters per kilogram. So clearly, if you look at differentiating this, it has a very high volume of distribution because of the partition coefficient being around 3.2. So that's the second point which I would like to look to. So if you look at head-to-head, -head, whether it's Tmax, bioavailability, half-life, volume distribution, food interaction, elimination, clearly... Telmisartan is slowly eliminated after oral administration with a half-life which is almost 20 to 30 hours. That's something very, very significant. And if you look at the pharmacological characteristics, losartan has a lot of drug interactions with rifampicin, fluconazole. It does a challenge with 2C9 and 3A4 CYP metabolism. And clearly other sartans have that. From that standpoint, telmisartan, but for a drug interaction with digoxin, virtually has no food interaction, no CYP metabolism issues, 
and so on and so forth. It's a very unique molecule from that standpoint. And clearly, if you see in the whole class of ARBs, it's the only molecule with a half-life of 24 hours. So that's really standing out very clearly. And therefore, it's something which we need to recognize very well and very well. So these physico-chemical differences in ARBs, do they matter? For example, we have three pro-drugs in this generation. We have Azil-Sartan, Candesartan, Olmesartan. These are all orally administered pro-drugs. Now, the physico-chemical differences between ARBs manifest with different binding mode and tissue penetration. We know they have different binding pockets on the receptor on basis of the chemical structures. We also know receptor blocking action of some of the ARBs are mediated through active metabolites. And this leads to differences in dissociation time and in most cases, apparently insurmountable antagonism. So tissue penetration, including passage through blood-brain barrier, can also be impacted. So obviously, optimal dosing, is there a difference between ARBs? For example, some ARBs lose their efficacy at the end of dosing interval. This is a head-to-head -head study, which was published by Smith et al. almost 17 years back, showing the loss of efficacy of losartan when it is compared head-to-head -head with telmisartan. Clearly, it all boils down to trough-to-peak ratio. We know trough-to-peak ratio is widely used as a measure of duration of antihypertensive efficacy. And if you look at the JNC6 recommendations, we need it more than 50% diastolic blood pressure, more than 50% systolic blood pressure. Losartan will have it at 35%, systolic 51% diastolic. But tell me, Sartan 40 milligram has a 66% and a near 100% with diastolic and 80, 92% and 100%. So obviously, if you look at simple peak to trough ratio, tell me Sartan produces a smoother blood pressure control over 24 hours than Losartan, reflecting in the longer duration of action. So the data is pretty overwhelming and clear cut. Also, when you look at the plasma elevation half-life of ARBs, the half-life of tell me Sartan is considerably longer than the other ARBs. Valsartan has 9 hours, Candy Sartan has approximately 3 to 11 hours, Iprostartan 5 to 7 hours, the active metabolite 6 to 9 hours, Ibrestartan 11 to 15 hours. But tell me Sartan is right up there for 24 hours. The big thing about tell me Sartan, which is why many of us love tell me Sartan, is it's anti-inflammatory. It has been shown to lower inflammatory markers in hypertensive patients. This reduction was found greater in hypertensive patients who switched to tell me Sartan in initially those who are maintained with Valsartan. The CRP reductions which were observed in Telmisartan treated antihypertensive patients with metabolic syndrome was greater than Valsartan treated patients. And when you look at the extent of the study which was done of hypertensive patients who received Telmi versus Valsartan after serulimus eluting stent insertions, again there was a superiority documented for Telmisartan versus Valsartan. Only Telmisartan was associated with a significant decrease in late lumen loss and inflammatory markers and in type 2 diabetics which is where my role comes in the crp reduction is quite robust compared to that of olmisartan which might have a little more hr hscrp reduction so obviously also it's a metabolic satin a lot of people feel tell me satin and that's the why the reason we all as diabetologists love tell me satin is because it has a clitazone like effect without the clitazone like side effects so this is head-to-head -head data which shows that tell me Sartan is the only ARB which has a 27-fold PPAR gamma activation. The cell base assay system which clearly shows that tell me Sartan is 27-fold compared to any other Sartan on planet Earth. And when you compare the ability of ARB with rosiglitazone or pyoglitazone to activate PPAR gamma, you can see that tell me Sartan is almost at 50% compared to a pyoglitazone or a rosiglitazone. So Activation of Telmisartan is 25 to 30 percent of the maximum level of the PPAR gamma activation, which is very, very unique. Beyond that, Telmisartan also has an endothelial impact. 40 milligram has more favorable impact on the endothelial function compared to Valsartan. And there was this trendy trial, which was a head to head trial, which was the first study to investigate RAS inhibition on endothelial function in the kidney, comparing Telmisartan versus Ramipril. And Clearly, tell me Sartan and Ramipril both improved endothelial function at baseline, though there was a numerically greater fall of renal plasma blood flow response compared to the LMMNA with tell me Sartan. So, obviously, some numerical advantage was seen. 
on the renal function when you compare head to head tell me sartan 40 mg titrated to 80 versus losartan 50 mg titrated to 100 in type 2 diabetic hypertensive patients who have overt nephropathy tell me sartan reduce the primary endpoint of urinary protein to creatinine ratio much more 29% compared to 20% of losartan over one year and another sir, sir, uh, study also found that tell me sartan significantly reduced microalbuminemia in hypertensive patients with metabolic sy- syndrome while valsartan patients had no effect on lvh the data is pretty clear cup in hypertensive patients who don't require antiarrhythmic therapy tell me sartan significantly and more efficacious than carvedilol in preventing or delaying recurrence of af and here you can see that on the lv mass index mean head to head with carvedilol you can see a robust result which has been documented including episodes of atrial fibrillation and head to head tell me sartan versus carvedilol if you look at the lv mass or the patients remaining free from recurrent atrial fibrillation clearly tell me sartan has been documented with some robust data but the primum nor nocere is first of all do no harm can in agent do cardiovascular protection and the on target study compared tell me sartan with the gold standard remipril at risk ace inhibitor tolerant patients who don't have heart failure and tell me sartan was found non inferior to remipril so the primary composite endpoint of cardiovascular outcome clearly of cardiovascular death myocardial infarction stroke hospitalization for heart failure it was seen clearly at parvit tell me sartan so it was cardio protective and the tolerance of tell me sartan was much better because there were lower rates of cough and angioedema which is a common side effect with tissue specific ace inhibitors like remipril so clearly it's a better tolerated agent and having a safe cardiovascular outcome status and this is the robust data which is very very clear because we have the hope data with us and when it is compared head to head with olmi sartan on controlling blood pressure tell me sartan was more beneficial in, than olmi sartan in controlling blood pressure early morning as well as improving glucose lipid profiles hypertension chf and metabolic syndrome so truly it's a metabolic sartan and if you look at the deltas here of the bnps and the systolic blood pressure of the natriuretic peptides and the heart failure data the data and the graphs speak for themselves and clearly you can see not only in the biomarkers of of heart failure but also on the biomarkers of lipid biology tell me sartan is lipid friendly and also on the biomarkers of glucose metabolism whether it's triglycerides or a1c again tell me sartan is extremely friendly so head to head when there is data of tell me sartan versus remipril you can see that the data is pretty robust and you can see that a comparison of systolic blood pressure tell me versus remipril has been pretty systematically there and both are equally effective as agents in mild to moderate hypertension but the greater reduction of diastolic blood pressure from fourth week onwards and systolic blood pressure and mean blood pressure from fourth to twelfth week was seen much more with tell me sartan compared to remipril group so clearly you can see that when we compare it with all other agents whether it is tell me sartan losartan candy sartan valsartan and this is a very small study because it's very difficult to do head to head studies in the response rate of systolic and diastolic blood pressure at different timings of the day morning and evening clearly tell me sartan stands out as a single agent of choice and when we measure home blood pressure monitoring which we often do now in clinical care you can see that again tell me sartan stands out in this study very clearly and if you look at the duration of blood pressure lowering effect the m to e ratio of each of the angiotensin receptor blockers tell me sartan is right up there on the pecking order so clearly the data is pretty similar and overwhelming for tem- tell me sartan compared to the other ones we also nowadays measure the home pulse pressure before and after taking the each angiotensin receptor blocker and this is data of losartan candy sartan valsartan and tell me sartan and clearly you can see the delta for tell me sartan is very robust and very unique in terms of tolerability and efficacy also you can see when it is compared head to head with olmi sartan and losartan clearly tell me sartan scores over and that data is very robust when when it comes to these groups on diastolic and systolic blood pressure so obviously when it comes to olmi versus tell me they are equally efficacious in lowering diastolic blood pressure and losartan is the least efficacious olmi sartan when compared to tell me and losartan probably is a little more efficacious in systolic blood pressure reduction but 
when it comes to the metabolic profile tell me sartan shows a favorable effect on fasting blood glucose and lipid profile so these are some clear facts which we need to know and recognize better so when we compare tell me sartan with all other agents we know losartan was the original standard we know it had a lot of approved indications including diabetic nephropathy and that's something which we know very well it can be given once or twice a day and more or less now is relegated because of the modern arbs candy sartan ipro sartan every sartan we rarely use tell me sartan is very much there because the data on cv risk reduction is very robust particularly in intolerant as patients while sartan came in a big way has some heart failure data to it but again has got not stuck there and of course the other indications for azil and olmi sartan are still emerging and don't have that robustness which tell me sartan has so head to head when you compare different studies of tell me sartan versus other arbs on rcts which are randomized controlled trials of arbs clearly the blood pressure reductions of tell me sartan are clearly robust so when you look at bp reductions in rcts of arb and diuretic combinations which is like tell me sartan with hydroxy uh, hcg or or hydroxychloroquine or the thiazide diuretics as they call it 12.5 mg of hydroxychlorothiazide clearly you can see that there is a very robust reduction of blood pressure and that's something which is very very clear cut when we compare randomized control trials of arbs with amlodipine as a combination again the data is extremely robust so you can combine it virtually with everything so my job was to show you that telmi sartan is a metabolic sartan it is clearly distinguishing itself from the other members of the arb class it has a very promising role in controlling hypertension glucose and lipid profile in india at least we use telmi sartan is the number one agent which is prescribed by most doctors not only just for blood pressure control for beyond blood pressure control also for cardiovascular risk reduction and probably it might have a valuable insight on stroke strategy for brevity of time i didn't discuss stroke data related to this thank you for a patient here